Hello everyone, my name is Iris Franz, Wujiaolian Wanru. Today we're going to continue to talk about buying and selling, and in particular, this is Variance Intermediate Microeconomics book, Chapter 9, Figure 9.5b. So remember from the previous video, we talked about how initially I had an endowment of GU1 and GU2 in the amount of omega-1 and omega-2. And the initial price of GU1 and GU2 were P1 star and P2 star respectively. So now suppose the price of GU2 does not change, and we only have the price of GU1 that changes. So suppose we have a new price, um, P1, which is lower than our previous price of GU1, P1 star. So we have a new lower price, that means the GU1 has become relatively cheaper. That means it makes sense for me to buy more GU1 and sell my GU2. So you can see that if the price of GU1 goes down, so if the price is lower than P1, it makes sense for me to buy more GU1 and my final consumption, X1, is going to be higher than my initial bundle, so we're here. What happens if the price of GU1 goes up? So suppose P1 is higher than the initial price. That means GU1 has become relatively expensive. So it makes sense for me to sell my GU1 to buy more GU2. So that means my final consumption of GU1, that is the amount of GU1, that's X1, should be lower than my initial endowment. That means, hey, I'm going to consume an amount that is less than omega 1, and therefore I'm here. So you can see that when the price is higher than P1, I consume less. When the price is lower than P1 star, I consume more. So that's the reason why I can derive this demand curve for one. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.